Welcome back to Chaotically Intolerant, episode 165. Today we're going to have Michael on the show. We're going to be talking baseball. We're going to do uh, kind of the past week, past six weeks. Um, we're going to open up with the Orioles, talk a lot of AL East battles. We're going to talk um, a little bit of Aaron Judge and his, I don't know, chase, chase for the, I don't even know. He's chasing the American League home run record, which it's not the Major League Baseball home run record. Uh, talk All-Star game. What we would change, we're going to talk a little bit of overall headlines. Jason Tatum did just sign uh, his five-year contract extension along with Derek White, which um, we did find out about Jason Tatum live on air. So um, you'll get our instant reaction. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, head over to Draft America, check out Michael's stuff, and let's go. Uh, Mike is back, obviously, our, our lead baseball analyst, as I like to give, you know, give him that title. How you doing, Mike? Good, man. How are you? Heard good things about the ping pong tournament? Yeah, I uh, I did go down in the semifinals to my own father's. Yeah. Um, definitely a disappointing end to the season. But, you know, it was better than last year. Last year, I went out in the quarterfinals and I was the fifth seed. This year, I went down in the semis and I was the second seed. So, you know, I, I take it as a... A progression, a progression year, just like the Orioles. Nice. Actually, a lot like the O's. They were they were the one seed, and then they got eliminated, and they're kind of they were one and done. I was one and done because I did get a buy. So hopefully, hopefully, I'll be like the Orioles this year. Uh, you know, coming going into next year. But we're gonna start off with I guess the top sports headlines of of the day. So today is Monday. We're recording on Monday. So first, Clay Thompson. Will be leaving the Warriors. Um, I think something that was kind of expected, uh, you know, as as the years go on, the Warriors that, that supremacy is kind of getting over with. Thank God. But he'll join the Mavs on a three-year, fifty million dollar deal. Now, I know NBA contracts are super lucrative, so I feel like this one is a little less lucrative in comparison because Derek White just got a large extension for one twenty-six. Yeah, I mean, where is he going to go? That's my question. Derek White. Oh, Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. He's going to the Mavs, which is a big ad for them. Yeah. Uh, Western Conference title. Mm -hmm. Which we, we did also did not get to do our, our NBA preview, um, which I wanted to do right before the finals, but it didn't really line up. Um, so I'm, 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 I want to get your NBA takes uh, as previewing the 2023 2024 NBA season. First off, I mean, who do you see winning MVP going into the 23 24 season? You mean the 24-25 season? No, no. We're, we're doing our NBA preview, the 23-24 season. I have Joker doing it again. Um, I don't I don't know who you have for, for the MVP. Are you talking about going into next year? No, I'm talking about going into this past season we've already played. I'm, I'm getting oh, your late gotcha, takes. Gotcha. I was late to the joke there. I'm going with uh, <laughs> John Wall. No, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Joker's a good pick. I got... Boston winning it all because they're overdue, and Dallas making a surprise run. So you know what? It was actually it. It should have been a better finals than it was. Honestly, it was. It, it had the potential to be really good. Yeah, the uh, I think it was just the Celtics team was. I mean, you can say what you want, and obviously, I'm a Celtics fan. I'm a homer, but they won what 64 games in a regular season. I mean, it's yeah. it's not like a shock that this Celtics team ran through pretty much everyone they played and everyone's like they played injured player injured teams I, i'm gonna be honest like they beat those teams in the regular season and you know may, maybe they maybe they did play 500 ball against those teams but they showed up when it mattered and we were we were without porzingis for like the whole playoffs right i mean the celtics went 16 and three in the postseason they lost the one road game the entire postseason that was their last one and I mean, they've been the best team the last few years. They just haven't won it. I mean, maybe they weren't the best. Maybe they were the second best team in 2022. I felt like last year they had a good shot to have beaten Denver had they gotten that. They came back from 3-0 to 4-6 game seven against Miami. Um, you know, it was about time this team won. And now they have that pressure off. And I don't know, they're the odds-on favorite again. You look at the betting lines, I think they're like 3-1. to one. Everyone else is like 7 or 8-1. to one. I mean, maybe free agencies changed that in the last few days. But for the most part, also I'll go into 24-25 as a prohibitive favorite yet again. Yeah, I, I think they feel like one of the most put-together teams. Like they, I, I did say this last week, so if, if you listen last week and you're like, 
Alex, stop giving your takes again. I'm going to do it anyways. They just seem very like primed to go on like a good three, four year run, I, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they're, I mean, look at the East, especially, you know, Philadelphia is probably going to have to do better than even what they've done. I mean, you, you need a couple of superstars and guys who can really stay healthy and that you can depend mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only thing that could be stopping that is if the ownership sells to the wrong group of people because the Boston Celtics ownership group just announced they will be, uh, the majority ownership group will be selling their shares um, in the Boston Celtics. Uh, Wick Grusbeck, uh, let's see, bought the team with his partner, Steve uh, Padlucha, um in 2002 for $360 million. Um, I wonder what the valuation is at right now because it has to be fucking high. Yeah, because the Suns, the Suns are at four billion dollars um, as their value, or that's how much Matt Ishiba uh, bought them for. So, um, I think the Celtics, the Celtics are one of those teams where like the ownership doesn't really seem, besides Red Auerbach, the ownership didn't really seem to be as impactful. Uh, the Red Sox, obviously, every Red Sox fan can point to John Henry as like the owner. They're like, we know this guy, we see him all the time. As a Colts fan, obviously, Jim Irsay right. is a character. And then uh, the Patriots, Boston Sports, once again, uh, Patriots, you know, Robert Kraft, uh, very well known. Also, I don't even, uh, again, I, I call myself a casual Bruins fan. I don't even know who the Bruins owner is. Um, well, I do. I had know. a chance to meet him this past year, so that was that was cool. I, I got to learn a lot more about the Jacobs family. It was Jeremy for a long time, I guess. He sort of handed the reins to his son, uh, Charlie and his other kids. So, but uh, yeah, the Bru yeah, the Bruins, they, I mean, they had a good run. Uh, they almost won the division and they lost it on the last day and it looked smart because then they beat the Leafs, but then they just lost to the Panthers like everyone else did. And Florida team was kind of a runaway train yet again. I have a lot more, um, peace when, when you lose to the eventual conference champions, there, there's a lot more peace there. Because they just, they were good. They were really fucking good. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, this has been a great two years for the Florida Panthers. Let's see. I don't think, yeah, we haven't even had a show since uh, the Oilers won. And so congrats to that Oilers fan that flashed, you know, flashed yourself at the game. Congrats to her. Yeah. Um, a lot of really, a lot of sex jokes are going viral lately. The Hawk Tua girl, which I am not personally... A fan of that joke she just like went on went on stage it with zach bryant but again i don't i don't really think it's that funny a blowjob awesome anyways uh and i guess the last thing we're gonna have a teenager um in the olympics he uh on the four 400 squad he's 16 years old quincy wilson that's just pretty cool a 16 year old in high school is gonna be at the olympics mm. that's cool yeah all right, well, let's let's jump into Major League Baseball. Give me a little update on the Baltimore Orioles uh, from an Orioles fan. I mean, they're, they're, I, was, I got to go see them play in New York. They put up 17 runs on the Yankees in the rubber game of a series a couple of weeks ago. That was fun. They've got a great offense. Um, they're a fun team to watch. They have a, they're in a, I think they're tied for first right now with the Yankees, but they have been hit hard by some pitching injuries. So if they're going to really be a championship caliber team this year. Um, they're going to need some help there. Uh, Kyle Bradish done for the year. Who couldn't have seen that coming? He had a strain UCL to start the year. I would have just liked to, them to have just waited. You know, if he was able to rest and then pitch, they could have used those eight starts that he made in September and October instead of in May and June. You know, they've got, so they've got a couple of good guy arms at the front with Burns and Rodriguez, but they need some help. He's John Means, Tyler Wells. I mean, every team's got at least one guy down with Tommy John, right? The Orioles have three, two very important guys, and, and they weren't sure what Wells was going to give them. They've got some issues in their bullpen. Craig Kimbrell asked that, or two nights ago, this is a fun stat, he got his first one-run save of the year. Yeah. Real. He was doing okay. Like, you look at his numbers and, you know, but he hadn't saved all, you know, he'd blown a few games where they were up by a run. He finally held on. They took three out of four from Texas. They lost five in a row. And then they won the next four and then lost. They have, yeah, they have some weaknesses right now to be addressed. But you know what? So does every team in the American League. That's the, that's the good news. The Yankees pitching has been exposed. They went into a big slump. They're still kind of in a big slump, even though they won yesterday. Don't look now, but Houston is charging really hard. They swept the Orioles. That's the team I'd worry about. 
more than the Guardians, more than the Yankees, more than the Royals, more than the Mariners. I mean, Seattle, my God, they have great pitching, but what an awful offense. I mean, there's no, they, they were up 10 games two weeks ago. Their lead's down to three and a half, and the Astros are winning today, so it might be three games. They might be the first team to ever have a 10-game lead in June and lose it before the All-Star. Jesus. Season. Mariner yeah. fans are used to that. You know, they're used to choking. I don't know if they're used to choking that fast. You know, in in such a short amount of time, but the American League is it's pretty open. So that's good news, bad news for all the contending team. You know, all the contending teams, and no one's really putting separation. Trade deadline is going to shape some of these teams in a major, major way. I wouldn't count out Texas if they're they're kind of buried uh, a little bit. They're eight games out. They're eight games under five hundred. Kind of surprising. You knew they had some injuries in their rotation going into the year. Seager's missed some time, but still wouldn't write them off either. And I wouldn't be shocked if like. I mean, I'll never pick Minnesota to win anything, but I wouldn't be shocked if a team like Kansas City went on a run in the postseason. I mean, of course, I. And how about the Red Sox? I haven't even mentioned the Red Sox. They are five games over. They right now. Let me see. They are game. I think it was the wild card. Was it fourteen games? The division was fourteen games. I want to say like two weeks ago. Uh, that sounds right. It was a big deficit. They took two out of three from the Yankees. They won a bunch of games. Uh, yeah, it's kind of happened fast and furious. The Red Sox had a couple rough games against the Padres, but they bounced back yesterday, got a win. Why not? Yeah, um, the Red Sox are a why not team, you know? Saturday was my birthday. The only, I'm, I'm not a birthday guy. I'm not really a big, yeah, you know, yeah. I've, after I turned, especially after I turned 21, I was like, this is like the last important birthday I'm really going to have. You know, even then, I didn't want to party. I didn't want to do anything. And my family still did that, which I was grateful. Anyways, the, the, my only wish for my birthday was to go out and watch the Red Sox on Saturday. I was like, I want to go watch, you know, Bogey returning to Fenway, Don Orsillo returning to Fenway. I love Don Orsillo. Yeah. Sadly, the restaurant didn't even have the MLB package. So I, I had to watch it on my phone. And we, in the third inning, I was like, okay, I'm done. I I don't I don't want to watch this anymore. We're we're gonna go do something else to you know drown my sorrows. But you know they they did play well yesterday. I, I know that I think Winkowski got the win. Um, the the pitching staff is I mean Im- imagine if the Red Sox pitching staff was fully healthy as well because you still have a couple of guys that we signed in the off season that you know obviously are not here. Yeah, I mean, and imagine if they didn't trade Chris Sale to the Braves and he wasn't, you know, like a Cy Young front runner. Yeah. All of a sudden, who'd they get again for him? Vaughn Grissom was one of the guys who hasn't seen the field. Yeah, Vaughn Grissom has been like back and forth off the, the injury list. Um, and I think, uh, let's see, actually. My man, Alex Anthopoulos. Yes. Alex again. Yeah, hold on. Uh, all I know is it's worked out a lot for the. It was just for Von Grissom, it looks like. Oh, it was just for Von Grissom. So I would say, barring a, uh, you know, David Ortiz like second half by Von Grissom or, a, you know, an injury, heaven forbid, to sale, I would say that the Braves fleeced the Red Sox in that trade. Look, I mean, you can sit here and rip on that trade all day, but the point is I don't think anybody, yourself probably included, would have thought through 83 games that they'd be five games over and very much in the thick of things. And trailing a couple of teams, you know, the two teams directly in front of the Red Sox are the Twins and the Royals, you know? And how how worried do you have to be that your team couldn't potentially catch those two teams? Yeah, maybe the Orioles and the Yankees, you didn't think you'd be right there with them and maybe you won't be there but you don't have to be you know in today's climate baseball you just have to be good enough and then good when it counts like the diamondbacks were last year the padres a couple of years ago getting to the nlcs so like that's that's the upside that's what the second and now third wild cards do mm-hmm. for the excitement levels and and you also all red Sox fans you can't forget about you're basically getting tristan casas as a as a deadline it actually just pre-deadline edition he said he's been taking He's taken thousands of mental, mental at bats, mental swings, <laughs> which I love it. I, I like him. I, you know, listen to one of his interviews. They, they had a Sunday night game. I, I guess it was the Yankees. You know, just, just kind of got some personality. He, he got torn apart. Um, he was laying out in the sun right before his MLB debut, like just at Fenway, laying out, getting a tan, 
in the sun and, and the Boston media tore him apart for that. He paints his fingernails. Of course, we know how, how Chicago media treats Caleb Williams. How, how do you think Boston would treat a guy who paints his nails? He nap in the locker room before he won his first Super Bowl. That's my favorite Super Bowl 36 <laughs> anecdote that I've heard along the way. So not say interesting cast. This is Tom Brady by any means, but I like it. I like these guys that, especially in today's day and age, fewer and fewer guys that have their own personalities and are, yeah. afraid, you know, are not afraid to kind of clap back a little bit at the media and the fact that, I mean, they live in a, in fairness, they live in a different world. You know, when Brady was starting out, there wasn't social media. There wasn't this seemingly like everything you do is under a microscope somewhere. Someone will dig something up that you wrote on Twitter eight years ago. You know, I mean, it's, it's harder for these guys today. So I applaud the, you know, Caleb Williams and Tristan Cassis of the world for, for kind of being who they are. What's, what's the Bull Durham quote? from uh, Kevin Costner about the shoes. He was like, if, if you, if you, uh, if you do it now, you're a slob. If you do it while you're in the show, you're quirky or something like, or you have, you are, you have character. Watch Bull Durham. That's one of my great shames that I haven't seen it, but there, there was, you haven't seen Bull Durham. I, seen I don't think I've seen it. No. Oh, that is a, that Tim Robbins. I mean, it, it's, oh, I know there was a great quote from a movie about minor league baseball. I watched growing up called long gone. And it was, Fuck them if they can't take a joke. So it could be the same <laughs> same effect for Cassis and Williams, yeah. those guys. All right. Well, also Red Sox, uh, Yolen, Yolen Cespedes. I thought that said, Yo, when I was looking through the injury report, um, I thought it said Yolenes Cespedes is day to day. And I was like, when did we pick up Yolenes Cespedes? Uh, but it is Yolen Cespedes. I hope that is pronounced correctly. Um, the same thing, yeah. And uh, also, um, Liam Hendricks ha did have a second bullpen on Friday, so that's that's also big if they can get him back. Um, yes. Where, I mean, the, the Blue Jays experiment, that whole experiment they had, is, is it dead? I mean, the, the you know, the young, or the, the sons of former ballplayers, that whole little thing, that young core that they had, is that completely dead already? I mean, it feels like just a few years ago we were thinking another World Series for Toronto. I mean, the Jays are, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they got rid of Kevin Biggio. He's playing with the Dodgers now. Guerrero's probably going to be on his way out. Bichette hasn't played up to his ability. It feels like, I, yeah, it's a great storyline, but no, the Blue Jays, and they need to go into a full rebuild, it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. Tear, tear the whole thing down. In the Central, yeah, and our, our, well, I mean, the, the Guardians are not the shit anymore, right? I, I can't say that they're shitty because they're they're fifty two and thirty. And again, I've, I said this about the Phillies: you can't apologize for being fifty two and thirty, no matter you know who you're playing, no matter what. Is there any reason? Is there like any sort of run you see for Kansas City? Because I know a lot of people are eyeing Kansas City to run for that division. I, I think Kansas City's got a great shot. I, I don't know. I have a weird feeling about them. Like the Chiefs' energy is going to transfer over to them. They've been kind of streaky this year, but they've. They've got, I mean, if Seth Lugo is going to be a Cy Young candidate, heck, what a, what a rotation they have or what a, you know, top heavy punch they have with him and Cole Reagans. I mean, they need some bullpen help, but a lot of excitement in that lineup. Um, it just seems like they've got an attitude. The twins never have an attitude. They have the <laughs> attitude like we, we can just do what we want in the regular season, but we're never going to win in October. It doesn't matter. And the Guardians, they, they right now have the longest drought without a championship. So the Royals are like, hey, we won a World Series in the last decade. Why not us? I, I think the Royals, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they made some noise this year. Yeah. And then to the West, once again, I think we did kind of cover that um, division. But it just, well, the athletics have uh, really come back down to earth, I think. Because last time we talked, there was a little bit of like an, oh, maybe, you know, maybe Oakland is going to make a push. But it seems like, you know, they have, they have just fully shut it down and honestly i i can say this honestly i haven't heard a single word about the los angeles angels in the last six weeks of my very limited you know watching of baseball because i was too busy with another thing so i mean my travel will come back at some point but what what's even the point yeah genuinely there's there's no point they're just so boring into the national league uh, the phillies are just kind of keeping pace now the mets grimace and the mets 
What is going on in New York? I'm seeing there's a concert from a player. I'm yeah, seeing. I was at the game Saturday. They blew a five run lead to the Astros. So as soon as that concert happened, I said, well, that's it. That's the end of their run because they partied hard. And then they lost two more to the Astros. Uh, Edwin Diaz was suspended. That suspension cost them both games. They didn't have him. They lost it late in the game. Yeah, I mean, the Mets were having a lot of fun. Like, they they were on a nice little roll there, but they're the Mets. They do this every year. They always have this one stretch where it's like, baseball's fun in New York again for the Mets. And it's like, mm-hmm. and then they burn themselves out trying to get back to 500. And then that's it. And that's like, we won't hear from them again. They're not making any real noise. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it feels like, yeah, every single year, it's. I think it's the New York thing more than anything. Just them being in New York, they you you get a little bit more. You get a, a the privilege of media coverage. It's it's New York. It's always going to be a little interesting. You like to watch the car accident, you know, as you're driving by, right? It's you know a lot of rubbernecking. I think. Uh, I guess uh, tell me a little bit about the Washington Nationals because I I think they're a nice little surprise. They're not fantastic, but they, yeah, they have been. They've been a, they've been a nice story. I mean, they're they're slipping a little bit. They're five games under, but everyone's kind of in it in the National League. That's the good news. The Nationals rotation not Patrick Corbin notwithstanding is 5.49 ERA. They they've been their pitching's actually been really good. Their pitching's been um, I think they've had, at one point they think they had the best rotation ERA in the league. I I want to say they're calling up James Wood, not James Woods, the actor, but James Wood. Hey, hey, Peter Griffin hates him. They have your family guy. Yeah, and James Wood, who tried to blow the whistle on 9-11 before it happened, right? And you don't know that story. That's I, I do not. You, do you want to enlighten me? I, I have no clue about this. Well, he, was on a, he was on a flight. I believe it was the same uh, destinations as the flight on 9-11. I guess it was, um, what, LAX to Boston was one of the flights, maybe? or LAX. I know one was going into Boston. Yeah. And he was in, yeah, I think he was sitting first class and he saw these men who looked suspicious and were essentially doing a dry run is what it was for, he thought for something bigger, but they they didn't know exactly what it was. So he actually called the FBI. They, I don't know if they didn't look into it or they didn't have enough time, Um, but he tells that story that, you know, he, he, and he believes it was the same guys and it was the same, that they were just. Doing a, doing a test run. Um, Jesus. I was thinking of that when I think of James Woods. A very, very bright guy. Uh, as for James Wood, I think it's, there's a lot of excitement around the Nationals right now. I still I still think they're ahead of schedule as, in terms of their rebuild. I, I still think, kind of given that they, they never really got a proper chance to defend their title in 2020, and then they kind of just slowly faded into the background and kind of started their rebuild in like 21 and kind of 22, and it's been... They lost 107 games in 22, 91 last year. I think Dave Martinez is a great manager. I'm really glad they kept him. Uh, they're still like the guys that they thought would be a bigger part of this rebuild maybe haven't been. Like Cabert Ruiz is hitting 203. They like they're getting contributions from guys maybe like CJ Abrams is doing well, but they're leaning on guys like Lane Thomas, Jacob Young. Um, Jesse Winker, they plugged him in. I mean, they're kind of, they're just kind of a, a, a scrappy bunch, but they, uh, I don't know if you saw, they got into it with the uh, Padres last week. They had a pretty, pretty fiery series with the Padres and who would have thought that those two teams would give us that kind of entertainment, but bench is cleared. Um, they walked Jerickson and Profar intentionally, and then he had a game winning hit and he gestured to the dugout. And then the next day they. They threw at it. Well, he had words with the catcher, and the bench is cleared, and then he got hit by the pitch, and they didn't eject the guy, even though they warned him. I mean, it was it was pretty wild. Uh, that's about the only time people have really heard of the Nationals in any grand stage this year. But I think they're coming along nicely. These young pitchers continue to develop, like Mackenzie Orr, Mitchell Parker, Jake Urban. They've all had really good years. Trevor Williams was doing great. He was 5-0 and with a 2.22 ERA before he hit the IL. Bullpen's been solid, but I still wouldn't expect the Nats to be buyers. I would think, if anything, they, you know, they still may look to deal from the farm system or uh, or deal a veteran to keep replenishing their farm system. But I think they're they're give them a year or two. I think they got a chance to really be in the thick of things. In the end, in the NL Central here, the Brewers seem to wide they've widened a little bit uh, the gap between them and the Cardinals over the last week. Uh, again, I I still whenever I look at a Paul Skeens start, I'm like what? How is this guy not? Like a a hundred percent Cy Young, unanimous Cy Young, 
because it feels like every start it's like one or two runs that's it like he's and he's just pumping gas every single time yeah i mean the pirates i thought they'd be doing even a little better honestly um Skeens is probably your front runner for rookie of the year, but don't sleep on Gavin Stone. He's got nine wins and a sub three RA for the Dodgers, of course. Like they could just of course. call you up and you'd probably get a few wins. So but yeah. I'd, I'd sit there with like a four ERA at the back of the rotation. You know? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. You might get a <laughs> contract out of that. Yeah, well they'll play they'll pay me league minimum and and somehow they just sprinkle that magic Dodger dust on my on my arm. And I'll be perfectly, I'll be good for, you know, probably 25 starts, you know, a, a good amount. Maybe, maybe I'll have to sit out a few, but just that magic Dodger dust. It's crazy. Yeah, unbelievable. But, but, I mean, they don't even have to play. Mookie Betts is out mm -hmm. for probably another month or so. Broke his hand on a hit by pitch. Um, the Dodger, I mean, they still have a bunch of guys that they're getting back. I mean, that's a scary thing. Nobody wants to compete with them in the NL West. Um they're 52 and 33. That feels like they're underperforming. They still have, let's see, what are they? A seven game lead, eight game lead in the NL West. Yeah, seven and a half. I mean, no one's going to challenge them. They can kind of play the whole season like they're getting ready for October, which is just making them antsy. Like, just hurry up and let's get the playoffs here already so we can shed that. Like, we choke all the time label. Yeah. Um, but Kershaw is supposed to come back. They may get Dustin May back, you know. Walker Buehler's on the shelf right now. He hasn't looked like himself since Tommy John. They've got Joe Kelly, Ryan Brazier, a couple of your 2018 Red Sox guys. Been out. Ryan Brazier uh, almost went to jail for truancy because um, he was bringing his kid along with him uh, to all the Red Sox games, and he was missing too much school. Is that, that right? Little, little interesting factoid. <laughs> And I love Ryan Brazier. I, I think he's an awesome story. He was out of baseball for a few years and, and yeah, came back was. just like Cam Booster. But yeah, almost almost uh, in trouble for truancy. So. Would not have guessed that. Uh, yeah, I very. We're going somewhere else with that. <laughs> a, a lot. I think that's actually like one of the better crimes that you could probably commit. Just truancy, like your kid just isn't going to school because you want him to be with you at baseball games. Like that's. That's one where I'd be like, I, you're fine. Like, you're you're a perfectly fine dude. Yeah, I'm sure he's learning just as much at, at Red Sox games as he is. Well, so. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely learns uh, how to be cheap at Red Sox games. Uh, all right. Uh, is there is there any, any chance? I mean, are we ever going to see another team win the NL West within the next 10 years? I mean, this is, yeah. Th is there any other chance for any other team? Yeah, it's a fair question. Of what's going to happen first? The Dodgers or Astros don't win their division. Take away 2020 from the Astros. That's the only time they didn't win in the last seven, eight years, whatever. Um, obviously, I think it'll happen in the AL. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the AL West has got the Angels and the A's. That's the problem. Yeah, I think it'll happen once because if you remember 2021, um, the Giants won 107 games, just randomly had this magical season, only to lose to the Dodgers and the NLCS. It'll probably happen like once. I don't know when or how. It might take a wrath of injuries, but it's like they're getting Otani to pitch next year. They're getting a, a an elite free agent without actually going out and getting anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's the terrifying thing. Yamamoto's out right now, but you figure next year they'll have a healthy uh, Otani and Yamamoto and Glasnow at the top of the rotation and knowing what the divers do. I mean, Gavin Stone will be your fourth starter. You know, and Kershaw could be your five if he comes back, or Bobby Miller or Emmett Sheehan or Tony Gonsolin if he comes back. Dustin May, I mean, my God, it's like, you're right. It's depressing to think about if you're those other teams. So I'm looking at the National League right now, which I knew it was super tight. There are seven teams within five games of the St. Louis Cardinals who currently have the third wild card spot. Who do you think are going to be sellers at the deadline of those of those teams? Because the Marlins and Rockies... Do they even have anything anyone wants to buy? I don't even know. Uh, but of those of those kind of close teams, who do you think is going to make a push, and who do you think is going to say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna punt this year and we're gonna move on to next season? In the National League, I think you know the team I thought was really going to be in it and is totally falling apart and very well may need to be sellers as the Cubs. In their last place, they're eleven and a half games out, seven games under five hundred. You know, they brought Bellinger back on a three-year deal. That Their bullpen's been a nightmare, but I still think that on a one-year deal, they could pawn 
Hector Neris for a decent minor leaguer, for example. I, I think you're going to see the Cubs move some guys because I, I don't know. It's not like they're going to move Dansby Swanson, but again, is he giving them enough for that contract? It's just, yeah. uh, I see them selling. I always see the Pirates selling. They could be 30 games over 500. They'll probably sell. Bob Nutting, man. <laughs> He is he is a seller of of everything. Doesn't and matter. I honestly think the Mets need to be sellers, even if they're hanging around five hundred. They're not. This isn't a serious championship caliber. Even even at two two games out from that third wild card spot. Yeah, but I mean, again, just because you're there at the end of July, a doesn't mean you're going to make it, and b doesn't mean that you're worthy, even if you do make. I mean, I know sometimes we say, "Oh, just get in, anything can happen," but that's not necessarily true. I mean, the teams that have done that. Probably were teams either underperformed or those teams got hot because they actually were able to add a lot of players. I don't think the Mets are, are in a position where they – I don't think their farm system is that good that they're going to be able to fleece in it. players impactful enough to make them a, a, a contending team this year. So I think they need to sell – team I'm curious about is Arizona because they're only two and a half games out or two games under. I mean, we know what they did last year. We know that they've been – they're without Merrill Kelly and Eduardo Rodriguez right now. So if you get those guys back, they got to feel like their team's going to get stronger right there. And then maybe you add another arm or another bat. You know, that, that's a team I keep my eye on. Obviously, San, and, you know, San Diego is going to buy. They're always buying. I give yeah. them credit. They're trying to be the Dodgers and beat the Dodgers. It just, it only worked that one time in the postseason. It's never worked in the regular season. With the, with Arizona, now, obviously, they're going to buy. I mean, Corbin Carroll is seen to be more of a liability at this point for that team. I think he's young enough where you still hold on to him and, and you don't put him in there if you're trying to make a run at this thing. What do you, I mean, what do you think they should do with him? Because, again, what, would you say he's a liability now or are you just like, we're going to hold on to him and we just want to let him develop? I think you just let him develop. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, he was great last year. Sophomore slump. I mean, it can happen. Okay, yeah. Because I've I've heard like some people say they should move him, and I, I'm like, ah, eh, he's pretty. I mean, he broke one rookie of the year last year. It's it, you're gonna have some regression at some point in your career. It's common. And then the American League. So right now, the Rays are still hanging around. The Blue Jays are. I think the Blue Jays are kind of the cutoff there because you have Texas at eight back, Detroit at eight back, and then you go into the real seller of the league. Who do you think are, are going to be sellers? I feel like Tampa will be the seller. The they're, all, yeah, they're always a seller. Tampa, absolutely. Toronto, absolutely. You mean the White Sox, of course. I mean, again, it would, somebody yeah. would be like, oh, I have to have Andrew Benintendi. I think you'll see Tommy Pham and Paul Young move. Those are guys that are you know veteran ex-Cardinals who you know are, are, could fill in, give you some pop. Somewhere along the line, you know, I'd have to think the Tigers would be sellers. But, you know, again, they, like they're a young team to begin with, and I thought they were going to be a little better than they are. Obviously, we know the A's are going to, and Angels, whatever they have, they'll, they'll get rid of. The team I'm curious most about is Texas, because Texas will get back. I mean, they're just getting Scherzer back. They're waiting on DeGrom to come back. They've been, Josh Young has been out. I mean, they're, They've got some reinforcements on the way. Can they rally from being eight games under 500 and eight games out of a wild card and a division spot at the moment? It's a tough call, but, you know, I think they're still built to be successful long term. They just won a World Series. I mean, I don't think they need to sell the farm. But at the same time, are they going to give up some of those young, talented players they have now for the future? I mean, this would be the fifth time out of five that Bruce, a Bruce Bochy team has reached or won the World Series. Remember, he went up in San Diego and missed the playoffs the next year. Padres in 99, Giants 11, 13, and 15, and the Rangers could very well miss the postseason this year. I don't know what it is. The guy wins, and he says, that's enough. I'm taking a year off. This Massive hit, Bruce Bochy. Massive hit. Yeah, is he, right, because his ego gets so big after the World Series, <laughs> it gets deflated the next year. That's what happens. Oh, man. All right. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left, so... What we're going to do, first off, am I going to have to watch other sporting events be cut into Yankee games to watch Aaron Judge chase the American League home run record again? Or is that something we're going to have to do again? Because I don't care about the American League home run record. I just don't. It is not. That, that's, that's like the AFC passing touchdown record. Well, I think the AFC passing touchdown record is the NFL passing touchdown record. So maybe the NFC passing touchdown record. Do, are we going to have to do that again? I mean, is, is it like a huh, realistic thing that we're going to see Judge break Barry Bonds' record? 
yes to the AL, no to the to the very month. I don't think. I I don't know. I mean, it's crazy because he had a horrible month of April. The Yankee fans, fair weather as they are, were booing him. Remember that <laughs> they were booing him. I mean, he had a terrible first month, and now you can't get him out. But like. I just think he's a guy you can strike out with low and away sliders. I really do. I just, I don't know why. He just, I don't know. But he's, he's too just, tall. He's too tall. That's, that's my explanation. That was my whole thing with um, Big Poppy also, where he was like, he was just too big. He couldn't get him out. He just covered too much of the plate, you know? Yeah. But, so. you know, just don't, don't leave one out over the plate. Don't leave that slider out over because he's going to fucking hammer it. I, I think my, I always think about, obscure you know obscure baseball memories my most obscure memory is a david ortiz walk-off double on phil coke when he was playing for the detroit tigers at Mm -hmm. fenway park i don't remember what year it is i just remember watching red sox tigers it was after school at like four o'clock watching david ortiz hit a walk-off double off the monster I don't know why. Whenever I think of, of David Ortiz, we were just talking about the Detroit Tigers. I, that is like my most obscure memory. And David Ortiz obviously has some memorable moments against the Detroit Tigers. But yeah. for some reason, that is just like my most memorable yet most obscure memory of, of David Ortiz. I don't know why. I was probably 10. Maybe 10. Yeah. I don't know if you have any obscure memories of, of baseball that you can think of right now, but... I just, I love bringing up those weird ones. Oh, yeah. What, what happened? I, you kind of got cut off. I don't know when you were talking about the walk off double. Was there a story in there? No, it, it was just, I remember Poppy being up and I remember Phil Coke because I was like, that that sounds like the soda. Yeah. Well, I remember watching on TV, uh, most dramatic Grand Slam in Orioles history. It was Chris Hoyles in 96. It was 13 10, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two out, three two count. Grand Slam to beat the That game. is the dream. That was the dream. It was yeah. in 96, and the Orioles that year went to the ALCS. That was the Jeffrey Mayer year. And Seattle was really good. And then the next year, they played Seattle in the division series, and I was at the game where Jeff Rebele, who was a, was a career journeyman, hit a huge home run off Randy Johnson in, like, first inning. And it set the tone. They won the game 3-1, to one, and that was, like, the moment of Rebele's career. I just remember thinking, what a genius move to put him in the lineup Trying to remember, they sat. I mean, I did, almost wanted to say he played instead of Alomar, but that can't be right because uh, I think Alomar was gone that year. No, I think it was. I, I think it was. Uh, he, yeah, he he was starting in place of Roberto Alomar in, in Game Four, and Davy Johnson was a great manager. It was with the Mets when they won. Just had a hunch, and Revelay hit the home run. I love, I love obscure. I just yeah, like, yeah. Just, Alomar had a shoulder problem, so he couldn't really hit righty. So it kind of made the decision easier. But he, he said, I, I'll take a Re- Rebele over like a gimpy Alomar. Yeah. Uh, for Andy Johnson and took him deep. All right. And then um, let's talk about the All-Star game. So I think, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how good the NHL All-Star game is. I know the NBA and, and the NFL All-Star festivities are horrible. I mean, the NFL has just completely gone away with it. Do you think Major League Baseball has the best All-Star game? Yes. Well, the N- NFL no longer has a real Pro Bowl, so we could yeah. scratch them off the list. I think the NHL, it's cool what they do, but it's not, you know, it's not that big a deal. So I'm going to say baseball definitely does. Home Run Derby, Futures game. I just wish they wore their own jerseys instead of these garbage, like, yeah. league uniforms. They used to just wear their own jerseys. It was really cool. I don't like the representative from every team. This isn't a participation trophy. I don't need to see some middle reliever for the A's or the Rockies just to fill a roster spot to make the fans feel. It's not like people in Denver or Oakland are going to get that upset. Those guys don't show up, you know. I Make it the best players. How – so I think I think there's a problem with – I don't, I don't know if it's a problem, but even even Major League Baseball, who has the best all-star game, um, it's still not that good because it's just, I mean, obviously it's it's harder to get these guys motivated, but how would you fix the game? I mean, would you, besides the uniforms, is there any other way you would fix the game or the voting or just make it better? I don't know. I think, at least the voting was just, the media. I don't. I don't like the old fan popularity. I think. I think it should be the players. I don't even think the media 
are well i think it should be as involved just get rid of the fan part of it right the pro bowl used to be a third fans a third players and a third coaches or media i don't remember it was something like that it was like some so yeah but the fan vote mattered but it wasn't the whole thing and um i don't know i i think maybe have it on a weekend too would be kind of cool i mean tuesday night's kind of weird in july i don't know I mean, the other leagues, they all do it at the NBA and NHL. It's All-Star Weekend. So I don't know what, why I have to have it on a Tuesday. I think it should just be on a stadium rotation automatically. It should just change. It should just go through all 30 stadiums, no matter what. Even the Trop? Sacramento and the Trop, yeah, maybe. Um, they do need to go back to Fenway, though. Fenway. Yeah, 79, Ted Williams being wheeled out. That was cool. Yeah, Pedro pitched two perfect innings, I think, or two scoreless, something. Yeah. I think maybe he had an immaculate inning in the first inning. Like, he opened up. Yeah, he was the MVP of that All-Star game, which was cool because you don't ever really see a starting pitcher get it. Yes. Um, Also, uh, breaking news, breaking news. um, The Boston Celtics have agreed to a five-year, $314 million extension with Jason Tatum. Holy shit, that's big money. It is. Good for him. Uh, Well-deserved. Yeah. Uh, Just please, please please try to not do... All of the corny shit. If you win again next year, like re trying to recreate the Kevin Garnett thing was just hard to watch. Um, and then the home run derby. How would you fix a home run derby? Because there were some updated rules that came out, and I, I, they need to get rid of the timer. I hate the timer. I think it's it's horrible for their swings. It makes them tired, and you can't watch the balls just fly. You can't watch them go all the way and watch them land. Let's go like back you to the it was. I liked it the way it was with the outs. Mm-hmm. The outs you were the best. You either hit a home run or you don't. It's, that's all yeah. it is. That's, that's how like home run derbies in the backyard would be conducted. Like if you, yeah. if you did it with your friends, it was okay, you get 10 outs or you just get 10 swings. We would do just the 10 swings, which I think would be better than the timer. I mean, the timer is, in my opinion, the worst possible way you could have done this i uh, yeah i agree i agree with you on that and and i think more guys drop out or they they choose to not participate because of the timer it's it's like lifting weights you know uh, while you're you know you're constantly lifting weights without getting a rest like these guys want rest yeah yeah i i, I would just yeah i don't like i don't like the way it is now <laughs> all right well i think that was a good good place to stop um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, go visit chaoticallyintolerant.com. Go check out draftamerica.com. Uh, anything, anything brand new up there? I had, I had made my predictions for the NBA and NHL. Going to have a uh, first half recap coming up. Basically. Awesome. Well, look out for that. Uh, again, go look up the uh, his his NBA and NHL predictions. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. Can can the Oilers do it? Can the oil? You know, Connor McDavid. Can he lift? the Oilers to a title? I don't know. Can can the Mavs upset the Celtics and, and you know, have Kyrie complete the uh, kind of the full circle thing? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll questions. see. We'll see um, a couple of days from, you know, a couple of days ago. Again, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week.